Hello and welcome to the first talk of 2022 from the Friends of Bushy and Home Parks. This evening we are very lucky to have uh, John Strachan with us. He's going to share his diary of his observations and photography of the birds of Bushy Park. He's going to kick off his talk with the equipment that he uses to do this. So I went for I went for Sony Sony cameras better in terms of focusing at that time. When I'm doing bird photography, the problem you have, and I'm sure you all have when you try to take pictures of the bird, is the bird is always too far away. <laughs> you know. So and the my type of photographer, I don't like sitting and hide and just sitting there for hours waiting for a bird to come. I can do that for some birds, but I want I like to go for a walk and walk around and see the birds in their environment and take pictures as I go around. I think most, most people do that. So in order to get high quality pictures, you need to have, a, you, you ideally need to have a camera with uh, high megapixels and you also need a long lens. <laughs> so I, I bought with the camera, I bought a Sony 200-600mm lens, f5.6 to 6.3. So I soon realised that even that's not long enough uh, for on a number of occasions. So I, I bought what you call a teleconverter, which you put on the lens, between the lens and the camera, and that gives you extra extra focal length, extra magnification, 1.4 times magnification. So that takes, and then a couple of months ago I got my dream lens, which is a 600mm f4, which is a superb lens, it's a prime lens, it's not a zoom lens. Uh, it's a bit, very expensive, I won't say how much. But it's, it's optical quality and the resolution is very good. And it's the start of winter because we're in winter. You know, well, three back, it's cold outside. So I'm talking winter is roughly November through February. So March is more spring, you get, you get different types of birds coming in. And uh, certain birds are easier to observe during the winter, especially when there's no leaves on the trees. <laughs> and, and the interesting thing is that which I haven't, haven't realised too much, is there's quite a number of species of birds come into the park in the winter. So it's not just spring and summer you see the birds. Winter you get quite a few different species of birds come into the park. So, the first bird, okay, of the favourite of everyone, the kingfisher. So it's resident all year, and I find, I find that it's best to go and get photos of it, taking them in late October through the winter, October, November, December. And uh, for, for the last two, two years, that's been the case. Um, you, you, you can get it just any, any time of the year, but this is the best time. And my technique for getting the kingfishers is, is I walk along and I listen for them. So a kingfisher has a very distinctive call. It's like a, you know, a dog whistle, beep, beep, it goes beep, beep. So when it takes off, and when I walk from it lines, it goes beep, beep. And when you hear that, you know the kingfisher's around. So I don't sit, so you see a lot of, the dogs are sitting around the waterhouse pond waiting for it to come, and it'll eventually come, but I'm not going to sit all morning waiting for it. So I just walk around, and uh, the so the locations I've been photographing the kingfishers in, the waterhouse pond, and, and, and in, in the tributaries in and out of the waterhouse pond here, down, down here, and up here. So, so that's, where I've been, that's where I've been getting, the, getting some photos. And I mean, to be honest, I didn't try that hard. I mean, I, I heard, it, heard the kingfisher in early November. I went there and just took some pictures when I heard it. Because sort of that. So remember, I'm shooting at uh, 840 millimeters f9. So this this is just around the waterhouse pond. It was pretty dull. So I was shooting this at like a 60th of a second. So the advantage of modern cameras is you have image stabilization in the camera and the lens. So you can you can have a low, you can have a you can have shooting at 840 millimeters. I'm going to have very slow shutter speeds. And the kingfisher, when it's perched, it doesn't, doesn't it moves its head and that, but it's not moving fast. You know, people say you, you want to shoot them at the same level as you are, so that you get, you're looking straight at them. But I didn't do it in this case, I'm slightly, I'm just slightly above the bird here. It doesn't, maybe it doesn't quite look like it, but I'm slightly above the bird. What I'm doing is I'm shooting down into the background of the pond. And all these dots here is, what well, they call it broker, but those are, those are leaves in the pond, different colours of autumn leaves, and they're shining up as you get that effect. So it's quite a nice little bird to shoot, and you get nice colours, and that's, that's how you do it. There are a few birds I've seen in the park, I haven't seen the previous winter. This was one of them, the Dartford Warbler. I saw my first one on the 13th of November, and I saw up to six of them in the park. 
uh, in, in, towards the end of November. Now we're, now we're down to just one or two, two, two. We have, we've had the locations here. So this, here's the Herring Pond. Either side of the Herring Pond, there's, there's farms. So I see some pictures. So there we go, Dark for Warbler. So it's a beautiful little bird. Uh, it's got this lovely vermilion orange eye, uh, ring around the eye, and it's and it's got this nice bluey brown hue. But uh, the bird, depending on that's the thing about a lot of these birds, depending on where you're shooting them and the lighting, they can look very different. So I'll show you some pictures here. But there was uh, there was one I shot in the summer. I went to went to RSPB Farnham, and I, I, I want to show a picture here. But it was it was bright blue, a really bright blue colour. But, but you'll see the differences in the colours of the birds as I go through. There's just a couple of pictures. So, right. So this is this is a female. It's a greyer bird, and this is rare because normally you see them on the farm. This one had jumped up into a hawthorn, and that's the mistletoe, and the mistletoe berries are hiding. Them. And and there, there's another female sitting on the just just on the just top of a fern, and uh, there's, and it's like uh, some 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 uh, branches of trees in the background because I'm. Close enough to it, and because I'm, oh, this one I was using the F4 lens, uh, well, it was F5.6, but I can manage to blur out the background, so you get this beautiful grey, smooth background with no, you know, completely blown out, as we call it. Right, so this one I took last week, last, uh, a week past Wednesday, uh, that, that, was, that was a sunny day, the first sunny day for a while it was, and uh, just in the ferns, and uh, there it is. You know. Okay, Frank, move on to another one. So this is a lot more common bird that we see in the park, which is a stone chat. Now the stone chat, the stone chats only come, again, they're, they're winter visits, but they come a bit early, October, September, October, they come to March and they disappear to breed. Now I think the reasons the Darfur warblers and the stone chats don't actually breed in the park is because there's not enough cover for them. So the farms, you know, the farms grow up, uh, during the summer and then die down again in the winter. So there's no, nowhere for them to hide and, and, and build the wood to, to put their nests. There's no little bushes. If you're very lucky, you get, you see two of them with the pair, and if you're really lucky, you get them on the same stalk. So. <laughs> and you're even more lucky, you get the female have, telling the male off, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So that's. That you, you can try and get them in, in flight, and but small birds are very difficult to capture in flight, as you can imagine. <laughs> so you, you take lots of shots, and you get the odd good one. So, and just another thing, look at the lighting. This is just in full sunlight. Uh, if people say some some people say I remember you, you can't take photo birds when there's lots of sun and that. Well, you can, and you, you get a different effect, and and you see all the detail in the terrace and up here. This is the male, and. There's a female. So that's, that's, a, that's a stone chat. Okay, right. Another thing I did, that more in 2020 and 2021 is, it's always good to, to take photos of ducks in the winter, in December, at the end of autumn, when you've still got uh, uh, leaves on the, on the trees in, in December, we still have here, and uh, the leaves are brown or whatever, you get nice colours on, on the on the ponds. This December 2020, we had lots of shovel, we had quite a few shovelers. Not so many this year. There was one on the, the Dana Fountain on Wednesday, but not so many. But this is a, this is a female shoveler. So this is around the herring pond. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm trying to get down as low as possible to the line of the bird. Obviously, I can't put myself in the water, but what I do is I have the camera on the deck, on the ground, and I and because it's a mirrorless camera, I can use the flip-up screen at the back and just look at the, so I don't need to lie on the ground, I just crouch down, look at the flip-up screen and just and get a picture of the bird going past. Now, because it's so low down, what we have is, all the, it's all white, the, the water, and that's, that's, that's basically the reflection of the little ripples on the water, the specular reflection from the clouds. So, it's, so the light's coming, the light, obviously the light's coming through the clouds, white light, because the clouds are white down onto the water and these little ripples are causing it. I'm using a very narrow depth of field so you can see that there's only maybe half a metre to a metre in, in depth in focus and everything else is out of focus, it's all blurred out. So that's how I get that effect. So I get, that's a nail, nail. <laughs> a lot more colourful, obviously. So anyway, a nice big, a nice, uh, big yellow eye. So 
again, that's in the same conditions, the same day. Okay, so I went back the, uh, a couple of days later when, when we had uh, a clear sky, I went back in the evening. And to the same, same location, same place, and took, took the pictures. So because the light's different, we don't have the white clouds and that, it's like a blue, more, you know, blue sky, the sun's very low, and we get the reflection of the reeds and that onto the pond. So we get the different colors. Right, and so the last one's a bit tough. So if you're, if you're lucky and you, get, you go in the evening or the morning, and as, uh, as people who do uh, photography of scenery in the park and that, you get all these wonderful suns and sunsets and sunrises, and you can get a shot like this. Mm -hmm. Where this is a tufted duck, where it's all like chocolate brown, orange, and all these different colours. And that's because you've got this, well, this was in the evenings, this is a, a lovely sunset, and the, the, the setting sun's quite, you know, it's quite red, it's, but then the light bouncing off the reeds and brown in the back, you get these lovely, lovely um, brown, orange chocolate tones. Talk about, still, still mainly in the winter, we talk about our smallest birds in the UK, which are the goldcrest and the firecrest. The goldcrest is the smallest bird, and the firecrest, which is uh, just very slightly bigger, but they're in the same family. Uh, now the the gold the gold crests can be seen. Actually, I, I, I live in Hampton Wick, so when I come in, in the, when I come in during the day, in the morning, whenever into Hampton Wick Gate, if you listen if you listen to the right, you can almost always hear a gold crest singing. There's a little house, there's a house here, a thatched house, and it's just around there you can hear it singing. But but you get the Millennium Wood oval plantation and up in, in the woodland gardens. So the gold crest. So the gold crest is, is lives lives in the park all year. Is, I'd say the numbers are in the tens in terms of you know maybe 10, 20 birds or so breeding in the park. Uh, and uh, and but the thing is in the winter, what happens is 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 that the numbers increase of gold crest because in Scandinavia, especially in Finland, the a lot of the gold crests fly all the way down from Finland to the UK and to continental Europe. So we get an influx of birds, depending on how bad the winter is in, in Finland and that moment, we get more and more birds coming. So, so we get an influx, so there's will be more birds coming. The fire crest is, prom is, is pretty rare in the park. I saw one last week and it was the first time I'd seen one. I don't think anyone's seen one for maybe a, a year, a couple of years in the park. So I'll show, you, I'll show you the picture of that one I've got as well. And the fire crest is different from the gold crest. The fire crest looks quite similar, but in terms of the, where, they, where, they, where, they, uh, where they live, the, the fire crest is a continental bird, so it like, likes warmer weather, so it, it prefers, you know, like France, Germany, Italy, Southern Europe. And, but the thing is, with climate change, it's one of the birds that has has taken advantage of that because as it's warmed up, the, the range of the fire crest has moved. And the fire crest was on the rare breeding list. There were only like 250 pairs breeding a couple a few years ago in the UK. But now they're a lot they're a lot more prevalent in the UK. As I said, but I mean there's a pair, there's a, maybe two pairs in Richmond Park, and this is the first one I've seen in Bushy Park. So they are still quite rare here, but if you go out to the new forest and that there are more down there. We see the you see them hanging on they're forever looking for food because they have to eat so they have to eat virtually all the time to stay alive during the day. They have to they have to eat and they're eating very, very tiny spiders and flies. Pines, but uh, like fur, the furs, but I mean they also I mean, here's one here, this is just looking up. This is on that deciduous tree, just looking up and uh, you know. Uh, and uh, this one looking straight towards us. It's on holly. So you're getting all sorts of different bushes, and uh, the last this is my this is, this is the last one here because it's it show a bit bit of uh, behaviour as well. So it's got it's got its uh, tongue stuck, it's got its beak open, this this tongue stuck okay, and it's got a little tiny insect on the end there. So it, it, that's what it does. It opens its mouth and it stick it sticks its tongue out and and, and captures captures the money in its tongue. That's what it does. <laughs> This is, this is a pump of gold crest. So they, they, have a, they have a crest on the top of their head and, and the crest opens like, like that. So it opens like that and, and, uh, and, and the, the, the crest. So this is a bit later on, so the budding, so this is maybe more, a bit more towards maybe March. 
for quite a week now, but they, when they start to, uh, say, when they, they start to their breeding season, mating season, they stay up, the, the males will uh, pull up in their crest. And the, this is the only picture I've got of the far crest. So, uh, as I said, I've only seen it, I've only seen it, I've seen it twice in the park, and I managed to take a picture of it once. So the difference, it's a very similar looking bird, it's a bit showier, a bit more colourful, but it has a black stripe along the eye, and it's got white, so it's like a zebra stripes here, I think, white, black, white, and that's the difference, it's a slightly bigger bird. So uh, it's a bit unfortunate, because I saw this one a week past Wednesday, and, but the thing is, is they're doing a lot of burning of uh, oedidendrons in there. Uh, in the woodland gardens at the moment, and uh, quite a bit of them was. And I think they were, I think they were pretty certain there were two of them because they were calling to each other. Uh, another not nice one to shoot, but easy to shoot the gold crest, which is the kestrels, and they're resident all the year. I like shooting them in the winter because because uh, they, they're doing a lot of hunting, the flesh leaves on the trees, and I've just pointed out the, the hunting grounds there for them, basically in any sort of open area. So okay, this is the first one. So this is a pair of them together. So the male is on the left with the grey head and the female is on the right and uh, in front of us we got about a year ago so I was lucky to get to get that. So I don't take pictures near nests or anything like that. Typical there, uh, this, is, this is a female, she's flying around, I took this, took this last week, it's, uh, it's just, she's flying around looking, she flies around from one hawthorn tree to another and just looking, looking uh, in between the flights, just looking to see if there's anything she can pick up. It's a male and he's, uh, he's in the hover. So you, you've, you've seen them before, the, the cash drops. So you see something will start hovering and then they'll, they'll pounce. So this, this is a meal here and he's, he's, got his, he's got his mouse and he's, he's eating it, obviously. So, I'll, I'll talk about spring, so it's roughly March through May. So sunrise and the birds become more active and it's just stuck because it's starting the green season. We get passage migrants, that's birds that are often coming from Africa or southern Europe and they just they come to the park for a few days and then move on to the north, to Scotland or the Yorkshire Moors or somewhere further north to breed. So talk about skylarks. So as I mentioned before, skylark location uh, protection area is here and we have, I've counted maybe about to 30 skylarks in this area, so it's quite quite important because we have a lot more skylarks than we have in which in which like likes of which in park. So it's quite important we uh, protect it. Mm. So this is a this is a typical view you know, skylark male with his crest up, his mouth open and he's calling or saying whatever. And what I've done here is this is backlit. So the little uh, circles in the background of the the vehicle vocable. But basically that's drop drops of water in the background being illuminated by the sun and then the, the lens in the background is blowing it because it's out of focus blows it up. So you just nice nice effect. This is a this is a scar I just threw past me and I just took a picture of it. And it's looking over to say, what are you looking at? <laughs> <laughs> so so that, uh, I, I I was trying to trying to find some literature on the behaviour of of and I couldn't find it I couldn't it was diff difficult. I found this paper in the uh, which was which is a, a like a scientific paper, but it was written in German, so I had to use Google Translate to translate from German to, to, to uh, English. This this uh, this uh, the scientist or apologist he'd gone he he'd done a lot of research in uh, in Denmark when they have uh, obviously have plenty of skylarks there, and he talked about their behaviour. One of the things he talks about, you know, you have rutting of deer, so this is analogous to rutting of the skylarks. So, in, towards the end of February and through March, you will find an influx of uh, skylarks coming into the skylark protection area, and the males will compete to, to pour out for a bit of space in that area, and they will fight. So, I saw last, last year, I saw about three or four fights, maybe four fights I saw of them. So, I've got a couple of pictures, again, difficult to take. And then basically, what they do is they will attack each other. You can see they've got their claws up and they'll go right back with their claws at each other and they'll also peck each other and try and... and you can see the one on the left, got, it's got a bit of feather on the other one on its lower beak. What I was looking at the top one is you know, striking down with, striking down with his, his claws. So they're quite vicious. Apparently, they, but it's not very common for them to get seriously hurt doing this, but it is, uh, it is quite a vicious thing so, to watch. So, uh, so you know, out in 
So with Mars time out in the family you're lucky enough you might see them do this. So this is this is this is my version of rotting the genome. And this is a couple of months later, this, this is another I just picture it flying as as as, summer, as, as spring moves towards summer and, the, and you, you, it's, it's very dry and you get the uh, grass becoming really yellow when you get these nice golden colours. The passage migrant now I'm talking about, I'm going to talk about is a wheat ear. I don't know if you've seen them or not. They're a lovely little bird and between 26th of March and 13th of May I saw probably, I saw mostly birds there, but it's probably 20 or 30 came through the park. And the, the locations are, are basically over just, just north of the Woodland Gardens. In, in, they like green space, so in, in, the, in the meadows, in the, in the, on the grass, and here in the scholar protection area just above it. This is what a wheatier looks like. So interesting things about wheatiers to is that they are fly they fly from Africa uh, and they're even, they're gonna come they're gonna fly through here and they're gonna go to the north. And when I quite I am from Scotland and when I visit my relatives in Scotland, in the north of Scotland, uh, in Aberdeenshire and go into the mountains, then you find them there and they're, they're, they breed there. So this, this is a male, so you can tell the male because he's got a blue back and he's got a big black stripe on the eye. So he's got this, this a blue grey back and the stripe on the eye. So that's the male, and the males come first. So the reason the males come first is they go to the breeding grounds and they basically stake their territory and then the females come and find them. So that's what, the typical behaviour, but he's on the ground looking, by looking for insects, ants, whatever to, to pick up and eat. That's what, that's what he's doing there. So the females come a bit later, and here's a female here, you can see a lot browner, didn't have a black stripe on the eye, uh, along the eye, and, and, it's, and, and that's, that's, that's basically the female. And they're typically, when you see them on top of the anthill, these little anthills, they'll stand on top of the anthills and look around to see what's going on. So you often see them on, you often see them on top of these anthills, and here's another one here. Um, 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 so that's, that's the good thing. So I saw them in the spring, but I didn't see them. When they come back from, from north of England, Scotland, where they're back, back to Africa, I didn't see them in the, in the autumn. So I think maybe the reason is, is that in the autumn, the grass is very long, and they don't like long grass. Because there were, there were a couple in Richmond Park, but they were sticking to the paths. So I'll talk about a few of the warblers that come. Mm -hmm. uh, so they come between February and October, and I put the patient any bushes or trees, because <laughs> you, you'll, you'll see, if you look at bushes like that, you'll see them. So the first one I'll talk, talk about it is the willow walk, is, is this like the chiff chaff, and it's uh, very similar looking to the willow warbler, except it has, it has a black, it's got black legs, you can see, and it's got a different colour, it's got a chiff chaff, chiff chaff, chiff chaff call, the call. And one is, this is, this is the willow warbler, so it's a similar looking bird. But the, you, you've got the orange feet that uh, that gives it away as so well. Otherwise, and it's got a descend, It's got a far more, far more melodic descending call when it calls. So it's completely different. And it's, it looks a lot more streamlined as well. This this one tends to travel further, migrate for longer distances. The chiff chaff doesn't migrate so far. And in fact, because it's been warmer here, because of climate change, that there are there is a it's starting to become a significant population which doesn't doesn't uh, migrate in the in the in, in the winter to to Africa. They stay they stay in parts of Britain at Michelle, but they don't seem to stay in, in Bushy Park. The, but if you go to like mostly, then you you see them there in the in the, in the winter. The black cap, because he's got a black cap. Uh, the nails are really are quite easy to spot because they, they sound a little bit right, like Romans, but extremely a lot louder. And when you hear them, and you're not that far away from you can't miss them. And you look around and you see them. And this one here is singing away in his little hole from the shell. They're really, they're really nice to see. The females are a lot more difficult to see because uh, they don't sing. So <laughs> you, 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 but uh, you often find them rooting around at, at, uh, in the bushes. This is taken a bit, a bit later on in the year. But I've got, I've got the female picture here. And the female black cap's got a brown cap, it's not got a black cap. And, uh, <laughs> and this one here is the white throat. So it's called the white throat because it's got a white throat, and it's got a more rasping call. And uh, yeah, but it, you, it's, there's a, quite a number of these 
maybe 20 to 30 in the park, you'll, in, in, you'll see. Uh, you can see numbers up to that, and uh, they're, they're quite vocal as well. Once you start hearing them, if you listen, if you if you listen to them online, you go white, you go white for listening. You hear the sound, you get to recognise them. Right. Okay. So that's the warblers. There are some other warblers that I know are in the park. There's sedge warblers and blue warblers. I have I've heard them, but I haven't seen them. A lot of them are in the reeds at the bit of the park we don't have access to. Moving on to summer, uh, so roughly June through August. And it's characterised mainly by observations of juvenile birds. Now I don't take pictures of birds at nests or that, but when they're sort of grown, almost growing up, and I'll take pictures of them. And I'll, I'll, there's a couple of examples I'll show. So, okay, first one is it's a, it's a green woodpecker. And they can be found everywhere in the park, but the it's the, the juvenile uh, green woodpeckers are, all, I think, even more attractive looking than the adults. I think. Right? I don't know what you think. So here we have the pair of them together. So they're actually both males. You can tell it's a male because it's got a red moustache on the side. So the females have a black moustache. So the, the adults, the, ad, the adults, adults here, and and the juveniles here saying I want fed or something like that. You often find them on there. So this is the, you can see the back of the bird with the lovely, lovely patterning on the back and. Uh, so they'll be rooting around in the ground, they, they, they dig up anthills and stuff like that to get uh, the ants. That's what, they, that's what they tend to spend all the time doing when they're in the ground. My favourite bird is cuckoo. Do you like cuckoos? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, adults uh, uh, sort of seen, seen in her uh, May, June time. I, I must admit, I didn't, I didn't hear or see any, but a couple of people reported having seen a female and there was one report uh, saying they'd heard one. I, I didn't in the Woodland Gardens, I hadn't heard them. But my, my first uh, view of them in the park actually went, actually went further out. I went to Putnam Common to see them there. There's plenty, there's plenty there. But, but my first view of them was this, was this view of one in August. This is, this is actually a juvenile, but you can see it's got lovely patterns and wings and the, and the tail with the speckles. And uh, you can see it's got a white patch at the side here. So they've got white patches in the back of the head and the side, they're, they're uh, juveniles. If you're lucky, because they're very timid birds, you'll see them. What their behaviour is, what they do is, they'll, they'll, they'll sit under the oaks. Uh, so it, you, you, you find the density where you find, you find them anywhere where there's, where there's groups of trees, oak trees, and the grass below, there's grass below the trees and it's not too high. Because what they do is they sit on sit sit on a branch under under the oak tree or whatever or whatever, and they look down and they're looking for caterpillars, and they'll find a caterpillar. They look for a caterpillar, see it, and they'll, they'll fly down, float down, pick it up, go back to, go back sometimes to the same branch or a neighbouring branch and eat it. We've already now we'll talk about swallows. So we're seen in the park in, in usually quite small numbers, uh, but the numbers increase throughout the summer. And then you find in July, August, you find lots of uh, lots of uh, young swallows at the Austin Martin Square in July and August. So it's very difficult for us to photograph because they're really, really fast, and you have to take hundreds of shots to get a good one. <laughs> so, so you just you, so you just uh, you just practice and you take some shots. So it, that was one of my one of my best ones I do. So so that's that's it. So that's just, that's the adult and. Right, so this is what you see in the park July and August, you see lots of birds and there's, and there's not just swallows, there's, there's martins here as well, sand martins and there's, and uh, there's many house martins there, I think there's a house martin here, and you've got swallows, lots of, you, and a lot of these are young, so, so and you, and you, know, you see that there's be hundreds of them in the park. So anyway, when, when you get young birds, then you get the, the sparrow hawk, starts coming down and suddenly I'm seeing sparrowhawks all the time and I'm going, well, why am I seeing sparrowhawks all the time because it's not a young bird so it's like he's potentially easy prey for them so it's just the sparrowhawk again just uh, just like uh, 20 yards from me just flew down just watched there I was watching on a neighbouring tree there were lots of uh, lots of uh, swallows young swallows but the sparrowhawk doesn't really have it it's all its own way 
I mean, what, what happens, uh, I've, I've watched the behavior of the, the, the birds and what happens when the spiral bot comes. So you've got a tree full of young and usually some animals, and as soon as they see the spiral bot, they make this sound alarm. It's like, ee, 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 that's the sound they make. And they all make, one, once one makes it, they all make it, and they all fly up into the air as high as possible. Because I, 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 and the reason for that is, is that the swallows that the swallow, especially the adults, are more than a match for the sparrowhawk in the air. So this, so this, it looks like this picture looks like uh, this is, uh, to, it looks like the sparrowhawk chasing the swallow. But what actually happened was I didn't quite catch it. The swallow came past and took a peck at the sparrowhawk and flew past. So the, the swallows, the swallows go for the adult swallows will go for the sparrowhawk. So, so I don't, I don't know how many. Uh, it, it obviously tries to go for the young birds because they can't fly so well. But the, but it's no it's no match for the adult birds. So but you see little you see little owls all the time in the park uh, and at dusk. But I, I tend to find them joy and obviously I saw was seeing quite a lot of them. In the, in, maybe it was because I was more spending more time in the woodland areas because we were looking at the looking at the cuckoos, young cuckoos. But anyway, so that's when I when I saw them in the middle of the day. So they don't just they don't just come out at night, you see them in the middle of the day as well. Probably partly because they're feeding young as well. There's another one that is looking straight, straight at me, but the, the third one I like is he looks straight at me, he's trying to look as big as possible. <laughs> he's only a little loud, but he's trying to look as big as possible. <laughs> so, so I have to, that's quite amusing. He's stretching up. Okay, right. The last, the last season in uh, autumn, so September, October, and it's char characterized by. Birds passing, a couple of birds passing, types of birds passing through, which I didn't see last spring, but I saw them all. So. And the first one is the plain shaft, which is very similar to the stone shaft, and you see it, you see it in the, you see, I saw it in the ferns that I have side of the ponds. They're quite rare now, they're, they're, uh, uh, because there are problems in Africa, they go they fly all the way to Africa and back, and there are problems, I think, with their. <coughs> With our grounds, with our ground, with our grounds in in, uh, in Africa, so not many of them are making the trip back from Africa to here. It's a bit like the cuckoo. The cuckoo as well has got problems in uh, in Africa in terms of in terms of our habitat there. So here's the wind chat. It looks just it looks sort of like the stone chat. The difference is you can see what a lovely speckled back back it's got, and it's got a a little stripe, it's got a white stripe on the eye. And there's another picture. You can see the, the, the stripe on the stripe on the eye there in the back. So that was we see. There were three or four in the park in the in the York, so. And the final the final bar I'll do is the spotted flycatcher. So a, a lovely little bird. I saw it, sightings of it from the first of September to fifth of October and it was in the Millennium Wood and also one because it was more of a speckled breast, so it's probably about a year's litter. And then um, almost a year later, the first of September, I saw one there as well. So in, in just in the little Millennium Wood. So uh, so they seem to be there, they seem to pop up there every 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 year in September. So hopefully we'll see one in uh, 2022 in September. And and here's Here's one of the other ones I saw, this was near, near the Hawthorne Lodge. Mm -hmm. So it's just a lovely, great bird. It's be very beautiful to watch. Uh, what they do is they sit on the tree and they're, you know, they're fly catchers. What they do is they look for a fly, and they see a fly in the crowd, flutter out, catch it, and come back to the branch. Often the same branch, a different branch with the fly. That's what they do. And this bird has got uh, problems in England in terms of the numbers. The numbers have gone rocketed downwards. In Scotland, Scotland seems to be doing, doing quite well with the numbers of flycatchers. When I got, got, got to Scotland, I see quite a few spotted flycatchers, but big England numbers aren't very good. And this one used to breed in the park, so, but it doesn't breed in the park anymore. So it's just a sign of the time, I think, for this one. I think they need to go farther north to get their, uh, get their food in them. And this is my last picture. So this one was just on, just beside uh, the Hawthorne Lodge, uh, just on the branch there. Just a picture. So they were one evening. So that was it.
and that's that's on my slides, so. <laughs>